Live from the heart of America, I'm Steve Guerra, your soldier of truth, the tip of the spear against liars here, there, and everywhere, fighting for you from the foxhole of freedom. And remember, my friends, think while it's still legal. This is the Steve Guerra Show, and here are three big things you need to know right now. Number one, there is a housing crisis in America. There simply are not enough houses to go around, pushing prices to the roof while mortgage rates are also sky high. It's a problem. Number two. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. did exactly as expected Monday and declared that he is now an independent candidate for president. He dumped the Democrat Party. We'll talk about that. Number three. On the front lines of the brand new Gaza war with Israel and Hamas, the brutality is gut-wrenching. Sadly, there's no leadership at all coming from America. None. It took Joe Biden eight hours on Saturday to issue any statement on the vicious surprise attack by terrorist soldiers They attacked and murdered men, women, and children indiscriminately in Israel. Young, old, didn't matter. On Monday, with the world looking down the barrel of a global war, Joe Biden and his team called a lid at 11.32 in the morning, meaning he was done for the day. He would have nothing to say about the massacres unleashed by the radical Islamist killers. The truth? Well, the truth is clear. Joe Biden is not capable of being president of the United States. And the blunt truth is, He never was. Not even before he was consumed by senility or whatever else is going on with him. He cannot lead the greatest nation on earth. He is weak. And because he is weak and his administration is weak, we are seeing wars break out. In Ukraine in February of last year and now the first declared war by Israel since 1973. 50 years. Weakness allows our enemies and the enemies of our allies to be bold and to attack because They do not expect America to respond in a coherent and meaningful way. We'll not see what happens now. Because this weakness could mean we're fully involved in the Middle East war, a widening war. It could easily lead all the way to Tehran because we all suspected and now know the mullahs in Iran were behind the coordinated attack on civilians, including little children, grandmothers, Holocaust survivors, and young people attending a music festival. The level of depravity included burning young women alive in the streets while crowds cheered, beheading and desecrating soldiers killed in the fighting and worse. There is no solution except the total eradication of Hamas. And while Joe Biden was nowhere to be found, the former president of the United States, who could be the next president as well, Donald Trump, he had plenty to say. He is able to do the job. Because while Joe Biden called it a day at 11.32 Monday morning, the world was left with no American leadership. This is something the former president has been calling him out for for a very long time. Listen. Very serious. We are in very, very grave danger of having a World War III. And this will be a war. This will be a war of obliteration. This will not be a war with, I say, army tanks going back and forth shooting at each other. This is the real deal. And we have a man that... uh, he can't even walk off a stage. He walks off a stage. He finishes his speech. He lo- looks. Oh. Well, he can't find. He has no idea. You know, there's always a stair there, a stair here. You could even walk off the front, jump or something, do something. He usually walks to the back into a wall. Yeah. There's a wall there. He walks right into a wall. Can't walk off a stage. Can't put two sentences together. And yet he's negotiating with President Xi of China. Who, when I say he's very smart, the press, look at, that's a lot of press back there. That's a lot. So, for him to negotiate with President Xi of China is like my high school football team playing the, let's see, what's a good team nowadays? Philadelphia's good. You know, they change a little bit. Yeah. Even more shocking, however, than the complete failure of leadership by Joe Biden and his useless administration was the repeated stupidity of trying to say a nuclear war is less of a concern than global warming. Yeah, I can't make this one up. That asinine assertion continued yesterday at the highest levels of the Biden administration. It is truly jaw-dropping. The Biden administration continues to stand on the totally indefensible position that a change in the weather... A change in the weather is more dangerous than nuclear war globally. This comment from John Kirby is delusional and extremely dangerous. Listen. The only existential threat humanity faces, even more frightening than a a nuclear war, 
is global warming going above 1.5 degrees in the next 20, 10 years. Given all the nuclear players in these two areas where we are now engaged on, does the president stand by that comment? Absolutely, he does. Climate change is an existential threat. It could, you know, it actually threatens and is capable of wiping out all human life on Earth uh, over time. I mean, that's I don't know how more existential you can get to that. But that doesn't mean that we walk away from our obligations, our national security interests in very dangerous parts of but the John, world. You mentioned he, he two said of them. it was more frightening than a nuclear war. Is that it's more frightening than a nuclear war in this moment? The president believes wholeheartedly that climate change is an existential threat to the all of human life on the planet. That's just science. That's a fact, Martha. But it doesn't mean that we turn our back on the other challenges facing this country and our allies and partners around the world. We've Israel, having seen its citizens slaughtered in their homes by bloodthirsty radical monsters, don't seem as worried about climate change as the clowns on Team Biden. I mean, seriously. Who believes any of that garbage? Any of it? Benjamin Netanyahu says Hamas will be pounded into the Stone Age for its attacks on innocent Israelis. Here's his take. Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. But though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. Once the Jewish people were stateless, once the Jewish people were defenseless, no longer. Hamas will understand that by attacking us, they've made a mistake of historic proportions. We will exact a price that will be remembered by them and Israel's other enemies for decades to come. The savage attacks that Hamas perpetrated against innocent Israelis are mind-boggling. Slaughtering families in their homes, massacring hundreds of young people at an outdoor festival, kidnapping scores of women, children, and elderly, even Holocaust survivors. Hamas terrorists bound, burned, and executed children. They are savages. Hamas is ISIS. And just as the forces of civilizations united to defeat ISIS, the forces of civilization must support Israel in defeating Hamas. Yeah. This war is just starting. This war will become urban combat. Door-to-door -door fighting, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, building to building, what buildings are left. Currently, there are a lot less buildings in Gaza than there were 48 hours ago. The Israelis are courteous enough to send text messages in advance and try to warn people, leave that building because it's about to get smashed. But of course, the death toll continues to rise, 1,500, 1,800, nobody's quite sure now. Thousands have been injured. And to accomplish what exactly? Why would you murder almost 300 people at a music festival? Doesn't exactly create much sympathy for your side. And the warmongers cheer on both sides. That's the sad part. The warmongers cheer on both sides. It's what they want. Take a break and I'll be right back.